Courtney in the building. Women get priority. Ladies first. Let's see what Courtney got to say. Courtney, what you do? Oh, you look mad already. Wait, what? What's what's wrong with what I'm saying? What's what I did wrong? <laughs> look, it's, not, it's honestly not even you. It's the men in your comments that oh, I'm not understanding well, where they're coming from. I'm not. So what? I mean, well, see, here's the thing. Here's here's the thing. Um, and this isn't to anybody. A lot of folks on this topic are super duper passionate. Now, should they be attacking women or making women feel bad about this and this and that? No, I don't agree with that. But a lot of it comes up. They, a lot of people don't understand how to put out the ideas so that people can understand them and, and try to grasp them. A lot of people just want to make a spectacle of it. And I can't be responsible for everybody in the comments. Now, I, it is what it is. You, yeah. it's, 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 it's crazy, though. It's crazy in there, though. I guess my whole thing is I want to understand where the disconnect is between black men and black women like i've it's all over the internet i keep seeing like these kevin samuels of course and i just started subscribing to you and looking at your comments and it's a lot of posts on social media it seems like there's just like a war between black men and black women and i'm not understanding where the disconnect is it just seems like there's a bunch of you do this you do this but it's like where what is the solution because we're sitting here talking about it and a lot of men in your comment section not talking about you but the men in your comment section are putting a lot of blame on black women but it's like that nothing is changing no solution is being had so i'm trying to well do you think that the solutions that. aren't do you think that the solutions aren't being heard because because they come off as offensive because any criticism to women uh, comes off as offensive especially if it comes to men especially if it comes from men because i'm gonna say it like this black men throughout the 90s especially all right and i and, and my father was definitely telling me a lot about this black men had a lot of crit criticism in the 90s all right every movie you watch every major black movie talks about how black men ain't this and this and that but we rarely ever look into what the black women were doing in that situation and i talked about an example earlier i don't know if you heard the monologue uh but i talked about baby boy all right, this movie has done well. BET all over the place, right? And all black people know Baby Boy. And we talk about Jody and we talk about Jody ain't shit, right? He got baby mamas all over the place. He living with his mama, this and this and that. But what was Yvette doing getting pregnant by a man that lives with his mother and rides a bike around the neighborhood? You, you get where I'm going see, with I it? Like, with that. I completely agree with that. Yeah. So all it is, it, really a lot of it just comes to accountability. Because I just had a, lay, uh, a woman on, um, and, I, and I brought up the fact of 80% obesity rate in our community. And the first thing she said was, it's because of a song by uh, Sir Mix-a-Lot called Baby Got Back in the 90s. And the first thing she did was pin that on black men. Uh -huh. OK, and my argument is simply this, regardless of if you believe that you want, regardless of if you want to be attractive to men or not. It's a health concern. Uh, that's the number one killer of black women in America. It's cardiac arrest, dying of heart disease. Okay, so when I say 80% of black women are overweight or obese and we need to change this, I don't care if you want to find a, ma a man to find you attractive. Just do it for yourself. It's, it's just the truth of the matter. So that comes off as, oh, he... See, the problem is this. Because a lot of our women have adopted the feminist movement, which does not care about you. It's just how it's just how it goes. The, wh white women got the right to vote way before black women did. They don't care about y'all. Y'all are disposable. So in there, I, like on black Twitter, the people I see putting in all the work and getting all the, the, the backlash from it is black women. Y'all the ones doing all the work for all these white women and all these. They're getting married. Those white women are getting married. And what that feminist movement has done is is made it so that any man that has these conversations with y'all are a part of the patriarchy. And that's the problem. So they're, they've no see, diverse think, our voices. I think where I get offended is when I hear the generalizations that say that black women don't take accountability, black women this, black women that, and me, myself as a black woman, and the black women I know and surround myself with don't fit into that narrative that's being painted by that's good. what you guys are saying. So that's, that's what, great. That's, that's what good for y'all. I'm not understanding. And I get offended when I see these comments because that's not my perspective of black women. Well, you see, know, here's the thing about me. Is inaccurate here's the, for the entire whole. But. Here's, the, here's the thing about me, Courtney. I, um, I get called all the time broke, dusty, simp, this and this and that. I mean, you'll have somebody saying I'm a bigot and I'm a misogynist. Then you'll have somebody saying I'm a simp. I, I don't get which one it is, but I'm married to a black woman. I'm 25 years old. I'm married to a black woman. My high school sweetheart. I've been dating her since I was 15 years old. Okay, so I've done everything right, too. And regardless of that, 
people are going to look at you from the greater scale. And that's why we have to change these numbers. All right. So it, it's just too much disconnect. And the fact that we're not working together is what's killing us all individually, regardless. So and I, I said this statistic before you got 43 percent. And I, I, you probably was in when I said this. 43% of black men want to be in relationships while only 23% of black women want to be in relationships. I, that, just, I cannot but believe 78% that. Where, what of black, did you get that from? <laughs> I'll, I'll look at national poll. I'll, I'll put it in the description. I'm sorry, I probably wouldn't be able to do it now, but it's a national poll review or something like that. I'll put it in the description for you to read. I promise I got you. I'm not bullshitting this stuff. I don't do that with my statistics. But I got you, though. It's a, it, it was a poll that was done in 2020. So only 23% of black women... You said only 23% of black women want black to be in relationships. So we just want we, to be in relationships. Most of us want to be single and yeah, well, I don't believe that that's true. I believe that most women want to live in this glorifying phase of being single and getting a bag and uh, manipulating men. And this is where a lot of people are stuck. So when asked that question, they may say no, because they, they don't want to go out and actively look for a man because they're afraid of not being enough. All right. They're afraid of not or feeling like they're not enough. And there are plenty of black men that are happy to accept you. But the problem is you get black women that are been given this false narrative of themselves that makes them think that they're more than they actually are. And I'm not trying to downplay any women, but all women are not tens. We just can't do that. But if you believe that, that makes you go for a man that's a 10. And when you go for a man that's a 10, he's less likely to commit to you, especially if you're not as attractive to him. It's just how it's just how nature works. So it's just it, it's a lot of facts that go into a lot of situations that go into a, a major problem. This is a multivariant problem. So, yeah, but I'm happy you're not being a part of that problem, though. So I, I, I salute to you for that. And see, so you're saying that black women want to date higher, but we don't. You're basically like Kevin Samuel saying we don't qualify to date higher. Is that that's I wouldn't even say well, I mean, just off the rating scale, just off looks alone. I, I can't I let me use this example. I have a friend, I don't know if you've ever seen my live before with him. Six four dude, he looks just like August I'll saying, I keep hearing the comment. They keep telling me to bring him back. I'll probably have him back on. Six four, super attractive dude. But the women that are coming up to him and are actually giving him a chance, like actually trying to shoot their shot, I'm like, are we I get it. You want to be ambitious. I get it. Right. But let's just be completely honest. If somebody, if somebody doesn't like and men are very visual creatures. If they don't like the way you look, they're less likely to commit to you. It's just a harsh reality. Men aren't allowed to say that, but it's the truth of the matter. It's just, I mean, that, that offends a lot of people, especially women, but it's just the truth. Just like how women don't like men that are broke and women don't like men that are short. It's just how it works. So I would say so even, there's even nothing wrong besides with besides the look category. Well, I mean, the average the average height for a black man is five, nine. How many black or black women do you hear say they want a man over six feet tall? So you've already limited your dating pool. Now you want a man that makes over a hundred thousand dollars and taller than me. Like, yeah, that's good. Then that means you have a, a better standard for a more realistic standard for finding a mate. But if you look at other women that are talking about, I want a man to make six figures. I mean, how many black men make six what figures? If I made, what that if I make six figures? Should I not? But see, that's where that's where women get it lost because women assume that a man that makes six figures want a woman that makes six figures. They believe that when they have the money, the opportunity will come, and it's simply not true. What happens is women want men that make six figures are over now, right? But men that make six figures are over don't care about how much you make because they have the money already. They have the money, so they don't care about the money. So they want women that are coachable, women that are inspirational, women that look out for the men, women that take care of the household. That's what they want. So if you're too busy going off to work, just like he is, how are you able to do those things? You know what I mean? So it, it just it's a lot that ties into it. You know what I mean? And truth be told, I don't know how many women actually want these men that they say that they want in terms of these quote unquote high value men making all this money, because that means he's working 40, 60 hours or 60 to 80 hours a week. He's not, he doesn't have time to hang out with you. All right. So the, the, the men, the women that need these kind of men are very select few hypergamous women that are okay with just accepting gifts and okay with getting, being cheated on. Generally speaking, not all the yeah. time, but generally speaking. All right. So, you know, everybody's stuck on how, how sweetie got the Birkin bag, but they don't know how she got it. You know what I mean? They don't know the things she had to get through all the cheating, all the lot. Yeah, but that's something she stuck through because that's something she wants. I don't think that most women are going to be able to handle that lifestyle. So, unfortunately, the more money you make a, as a as a woman, a the, the lower your, the smaller your dating pool is. 
from the perspective of me as a black woman who I consider myself a successful and educated black woman who is searching for a black man who is also educated and successful. I feel like my dating pool is very narrow, but you're saying that black men are more successful than black women. Where are they? I, me and my other black female friends do not see them. So I'm just trying to understand where are well, they? Well, I mean, it depends on where you're hanging out. And the ones who don't have kids yeah. and... See, now we get narrow. Like, where is this? You're talking about a unicorn. All right, you're talking about a man that's it's, it's going to be hard to find. What? I mean, why it just is, is what unicorn? it is. But well, why is that a unicorn, though? Because you're asking for a man that wants to date you that makes over 100000 How many? Okay, it's just, and I mean, this is where it gets offensive, but how many men actually want to date you in the first place? But then now you got to narrow it down to how many men over a hundred makes $100,000 or more wants to date you? And simply, it, the, the men who make that much money have access to too many women. The women that they have the access to date look different. They're they're very they look a certain way. They're a certain kind of woman. Okay, and I mean it, that's okay. There's nothing wrong. I'm trying to tell you, there's nothing wrong with dating a hard working person. There's just nothing wrong with it. But there are black more black men in in the upper class than there are black women. It, that's 100 percent true. But this is but this is what happens. Black women go and they get degrees and they become professional. Which 70 percent of women who are professional are single. OK, they end up single. And when you hit the age of 35, your chances of getting married decreases to 30 percent. So you go out and get these jobs and then you look back at the men. The majority of your dating pool are working class men. Majority. Now, not all of them more in the upper class than black women. But the majority of the dating pool that you're going to have access to are workers. And like you said, you don't want a worker. So that's what happens. So you, there's this disconnect there. People I'm get degrees and then they look down on people that, that work but... hard. No, I don't look down on people that work hard, but I mean, when you are accustomed to a way of living and you would want somebody who matches that, right? Like you, that just kind of makes sense to me, but. That's, that's a women's thing. Men don't feel that way. We date quote unquote <laughs> down all the time. <laughs> Men don't want a person that's equal to them in the, how much money they make in the, in the lifestyle that they live out. Uh, there, there could be a man that's a millionaire, see a beautiful woman at McDonald's. He'll go and pick her up. This is how it works for men. We care more about looks. We care more about femininity. We care, we care more about nurturing qualities just in general. So, I mean, I, I mean, you know, we're in a tough spot here, Courtney. I get where you're going, and I do feel like, you know, I hope the best for you in finding a <laughs> man, but the chances of the, the, the pool you, you in a, you in a tough spot because every woman wants the $200,000 a year, man. So you ain't only competing against other women that make $100,000. You're competing against every woman. It's just how I work. I'm only 5'7", Right. Five seven five eight, tough tough. You, you feel me? You gotta have a podcast with over fifty thousand subscribers as of yesterday. Appreciate y'all for all the love. It's just what how the game works. It's just how the game go. Everybody got advantages and disadvantages. But I appreciate you for coming on, Courtney. We got Mary up I next. Also Mary like up to address. Wow. Let me go ahead though, Courtney. I, I, let me go ahead and get Mary on. Appreciate you though. 